Hello, my name is E.L. Murray, and I'm the author of Fable House, which publishes on the 8th of June. This is the story of a children's home like no other. Fable House is home to some of Britain's brown babies born during the Second World War, including characters Heather, Nat, Lloyd and Arlene, otherwise known as the Romers. Exploring together one day, they find a stone tower known as a cairn, whose mystic secrets intrigue them. And there they meet Palamedes, a black knight from King Arthur's court. He warns them that there's a great danger coming and they all have to bond together to protect their world against the Fae who are intent on taking over. Heather and her friends must join Pal in a massive adventure to save Fable House and the place they all call home. I'm gonna to read to you from Fable House. This is from chapter four, where the Romers, Heather, Nat, Lloyd and Arlene, where they first meet Pal. Heather, Nat's voice was shaky. And as I turned, both he and Arlene stared wide-eyed, backing away from something at the bottom of the cairn. That a dead body? Arlene called out nervously, pointing a wavering finger at a lifeless shape. I looked over at Lloyd, who grabbed a rock, readying to throw it if needed. Quick thinking. Nat lifted his fists in front of his face, but crouched behind Arlene. Think it's a wild animal? The bundle, a curled up heap, groaned and shifted. We all stepped back. Ha, that's no badger, Arlene breathed. As the shape unfolded, legs and arms appearing, we realised it was a man. He stood up, gasping, we'd stared up at him. He was very tall. My legs quivered, thighs made of ball bearings, and the moisture in my mouth vanished. Who was he and what was he doing here? Sh should we run? I stammered, not convinced my legs would get me to the tree in the glade without collapsing. There's four of us and only one of him, Lloyd whispered, not taking his eyes off the man, who was moving very slowly, straining his neck and shoulders. As well as being very tall, the man was broad and dark skinned with a wide open face. His skin was darker than any of us at Fable House and glistening shiny. I didn't know about the others, but I'd never seen a dark skinned man before. Only on Lloyd's baseball cigarette cards, Jackie Robinson and the like. His clothes were unusual, a loose linen smock and trousers of a heavy dark cloth with a leather harness covered in bracken and stained deep green with moss. And I think he's hurt, look. Lloyd was right. The man looked like he'd had seven bells bashed out of him by someone, his hands and arms scratched and bleeding. Still, I'd never seen anyone who looked more regal, the way he held himself, spine like a rod, chin jutting out. The hollows of his cheekbones glowed. His hair was like dark, thick ropes, which twisted down to his shoulders. A dimple dipped in his chin. Help, help me, he croaked. His dark eyes looked wary, and as he stared at us in turn, eventually his panting slowed and he stumbled against the cairn. Who are you? Lloyd asked cautiously. He stepped in front of Nat and Arlene with his arm out as a barrier, protecting us. This is our land. Where am I? The man put his hand to his ribs and bent over, wincing. I, I... He was in pain. Helping him was all that mattered. Who did this to you? I asked gently, stepping forward, fear forgotten. What are you doing out here? He ain't the full shilling, it seems to me, Arlene whispered nervously. Perhaps I should have been more afraid, but I wasn't. He was wounded, like an animal caught in a trap, and he just needed to be freed. Nat ducked his head under Arlene's arm and touched the man's billowing sleeve. Mister, what's your name? My name? The man's voice rumbled low and rusty, as if he hadn't spoken for years. His eyes clouded and he nodded his head like he was about to bow. I, I am Pal. His accent was strange, thick and heavy. Pal? Lloyd stretched out his arm and holding Pal's elbow, all four of us stepped forward together and eased him down into a sitting position. As in friend? Pal rubbed the back of his head and grimaced, his eyes fluttering closed. Where am I? You must have come from Selworthy Way, Arlene reasoned. Was you, did you get beat up? Lloyd asked. Is that what happened? Them lot from the village? We all had the same thoughts. 
If those village kids weren't used to brown faces, then the likes of their parents probably hadn't seen many black-faced grown-ups neither. Nor had we, but we at least recognised our own. We would never be afraid of Pal for no reason. Why would we? He was one of us. I think he's really hurt, I murmured to Lloyd, pointing to a tear in Pal's trousers where blood dripped from a gash in his calf. The wind picked up, whipping round the cairn with a whistling noise. Pal turned his head slowly, studying the landscape taking it all in. Methinks, he spread his arms wide, I know this land, and yet the unfamiliar surrounds us. We can walk with you if you're lost, I said. The village is only a mile or so across the moorland. Look, out there, north, that's the Bristol Channel, and south, well, that's the Exmoor Hills. Powell shook his head and tried to stand, but the effort made him stagger and he sank to his knees. He moaned again, a terrible, deep, chilling noise, sounding like he was more than just physically hurt. Nat sensed it too, and his forehead creased with worry. Mister! Nat rushed forward and threw his skinny arms around Pal's neck, clinging, trying to lift him up. Come on, mister, you'll be all right. <laughs>